So last month, I just came back from Fujikina and gave you guys a quick look at the GFX 100. But today, we have a full production model of the GFX 100 by Fujifilm, and we're going to take it out today for a little spin. So if you don't know what the Fujifilm GFX100 is, it is Fujifilm's brand new large format size camera which sits above the 50S. Designed for studio work, landscape work, architecture, basically any kind of photography that you're looking to print large format as well as do professionally, the GFX100 has you covered. Now one of the best things about the 100 is, although it does use a 100 megapixel sensor, the autofocus performance and everything else about the camera doesn't make it seem like a large format camera, but we'll go into detail that a little bit later on. But what I'm gonna talk about now is the actual design of the GFX100. And there's a lot to talk about in this segment. So starting from the top of the camera, you'll notice at the top, you've got this nice and large 5.76 million dot EVF, which is super clear and refreshing and one of the only 5.6 million dot EVFs on the market. And next to the EVF, you have your drive mode dial, which will allow you to cycle through single shot, continuous burst, and any other drive mode function. And then you've got a dial on the outside of that that will allow you to choose between three different modes, which you have still, multi, as well as movie mode. Now, on the right-hand side of the top, you have this nice and large top settings LCD, and it's pretty bright and very visible as well. One of the coolest things about this top LCD is one, it's back illuminated, so you can use it at night. But on top of that as well, it is more graphical as well. So you can change what's on this actual screen. You can basically set it to maybe want your shutter speed and your ISO. And you can even have like a kind of traditional dial look as well through that top LCD screen as well. Now, speaking of screens as well, the camera houses a total of three screens. So you have your big, large LCD screen at the back, which is nice and bright very good for daylight viewing as well as a bottom settings lcd screen as well which can come in handy if you have your camera mounted on a tripod and you don't really want to look over to the top of your camera to view your settings speaking about the back of the camera as well in terms of the button layout the gfx 100 is a lot different to the 50s so it's got your one joystick which will allow you to navigate through the focus points as well as throughout the menu and then you've just got your simple menu button your playback button as well as your display buttons now there's one feature that that this camera is missing and that are, a lot of people may not be happy about and that's the four-way joystick but the camera does have a 3.2 inch touchscreen to help you navigate as well as that joystick as well so it may take a bit of time to get used to like any other professional camera the gfx 100 does have a new build battery grip which houses two T125 batteries giving you a total of 800 shots of life. Now, the battery grip also has a secondary shutter button, so you can use the camera in portrait mode comfortably. And you also have access to a second joystick as well, so you can navigate through your focus points, as well as your quick menu as well, so you can change your white balance and any other settings in there as well. Now, a lot of people have been mentioning that the grip on the GFX100 isn't as comfortable in the portrait format and that is because there is no rubberized grip when using it in portrait mode you're literally just holding on to i guess a kind of piece of plastic so if you have really sweaty hands then it might slip out so make sure when you're using the gfx 100 to have a strap on you just in case and just to get some extra support when using the body anyway now in terms of the body size it is quite large. It is probably the same as a DSLR with a battery grip on it, like a 5D Mark IV mounted with a battery grip. However, it doesn't feel heavy at all. It is actually quite lightweight because of its magnesium alloy construction, which is fully weather sealed as well, giving you operating temperatures from negative 10 degrees all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius. So on the right hand side of the camera, you've got two SD card slots and you've also got your remote port. On the left hand side of the camera, for your video stuff, you do have a 3.5mm audio jack as well as a 3.5mm headphone jack. And below that, you've got a USB-C port just for quick tethering, a HDMI port for output, and you also have a 15 volt direct power supply so you can keep the camera running for longer if you're on those shoots in your studio. 
On the inside of the camera, you've got a large format 102 megapixel sensor, which is backed up with an X processor 4. This gives you an ISO range of 100 to 12,800 or an expandable range of 50 to 102,400. You can also shoot continuously up to 5 frames per second. In terms of video, it's got 4K DCI up to 30 frames per second, Full HD up to 60 frames per second, or films with a 10-bit color depth. On top of that, if you do decide to record externally via HDMI to a video recorder, you can get a 10-bit 422 color depth. And for further video support, the GFX100 does shoot an F-Log, which gives you a nicer, flatter color profile for you to grade later in post. In addition to that, if you are filming handheld, it does have a 5-axis in-body image stabilization as well, which is not in the other GFX models. This is also beneficial as well if you do like to shoot with longer telephoto lenses or just general handheld photography shooting. And finally, to top it all off, it does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth inbuilt in the camera, which will allow you to connect straight to your smartphone or smart device to use it as a camera remote or to transfer your photos across to your smart device. So talking about the performance aspect of the GFX 100. Now, I forgot to mention earlier, it does have a 3.76 million dot face detection autofocus system, which gives you autofocusing capabilities as low as negative 3 EV. Now, using this camera, one of the most surprising things, as I mentioned in the earlier first impression video, is that the GFX 100 doesn't really feel like you're shooting on a large format camera, and that's really important. The speed of the autofocus in it is ridiculously fast. Like, it would be basically identical to the X-T3, if not slightly bit slower. Now we've got the lens, the 45mm, updated to the latest firmware for it to work well with the current face detection in the GFX100 and honestly the focus is amazing. The continuous eye autofocus works really well as well as well as the facial detection features and just all around, just pointing it around and shooting it, it really does just feel like your standard mirrorless camera or DSLR because the focus is so accurate and lightning quick, which I really love. Other cool features that I've discovered that this camera has as well, and like any other pro camera such as the Canon 1DX, it does have a voice memo feature. So if you are taking a photo, you can record a voice memo onto it, which you can access when you drop it into your computer. Basically, if you're just going to be talking about settings at the time or how you got to that photo, it's just a good refresher so that you know how you took your photo for whatever purpose that you need it later on. So now just going to quickly talk about the user experience of the GFX100. Predominantly, I use a Nikon and a Panasonic system. So coming over to a GFX100, it's basically translatable. It's really easy to use. I haven't had much time for me to stop and figure it around. And navigating through the Fuji menus is quite familiar to me. Testing out the X-T3, X-T30, it's all basically similar in this camera. Now, if you are a passionate Fuji user, you will notice there are two main dials that are missing on this camera. And for some people that might be a bit weird. There's no shutter speed dial on the GFX 100 and there is no um, exposure compensation dial or ISO dial as well. Now for exposure compensation, there is a button that you can access and press in or any function button that you can program to do that. And that's the same with your ISO as well. But for those who are wanting to change their shutter, you will just have to roll your dial to change that. And that just might take a bit of extra time for you to just re-learn everything again, but it's not too complicated. Today's sample images were shot using a Fujifilm GFX100 combined with a 110mm and 45mm. As expected, the image quality out of the GFX is superb. The detail out of the 102 megapixel sensor is filled with color, depth, and detail. The dynamic range is amazing. We were able to recover blown out highlights and shadows without losing detail. One of the things we were super keen to test is how much you can crop on a 102 megapixel photo. And the answer is a lot. Check out these amazing crops and the detail it can still preserve. We were so impressed on how well it handled the croppings and adjustments in post-processing. One thing to note is that we did process all these photos in Lightroom and did not test it on Capture One, which may or may not give better results. For the video experience, in autofocus, we noticed that the GF Prime lenses aren't the best lenses to use in manual focus due to its focus by wire construction. 
However, we have been told that there are a range of Cine lenses to come in the future which should improve that experience. In saying that, the continuous autofocus is great in video. One thing to note, the IBIS does blip out a bit when panning rough, so keep the camera steady. The image quality, colors, and actual video result and flexibility is freaking amazing. We shot all of the footage on a turn of film simulation, which gave us a bit more room to work with in colors and posts. We wish it could have filmed in 4K, in 50, or give us more flexibility in slow motion. However, as far as large format goes, this is incredible. The GFX100 could look to potentially be a viable option for cinema users later on down the track. And for Fujifilm, that's a big deal. To sum up, we are super impressed by the results of the GFX100 in both video and photo. So my final thoughts on the GFX100. Now this isn't a camera that you're going to be seeing in everybody's hands because it is quite expensive. Um, in terms of comparatively, compared to other large format sensor cameras, the GFX100 is actually really well priced, especially for the autofocus features that it has the image sensor being 102 megapixels and the potential for it to be a game changer for cinema users in the future with its 4K DCI and basically its whole focusing system for video is pretty damn good. So where I see the GFX100 fitting in, if you're a person that shoots more so advertising or you're looking to get to cinema or you're an enthusiast that's looking to get the best landscape photos without dropping more than twenty or fifty thousand dollars on a full landscape medium format kit, the GFX 100 is super accessible in that regard. In addition to that as well, this makes it really possible as well for people who want to use the GFX 100 as an everyday camera because of its great autofocus performance and large range of lenses that Fuji are constantly supporting. Furthermore as well, the GFX 100 is feature heavy for its price tag as well. You've got features such as five axis in-body image stabilization. You've got your large array of one million screens that are located on this camera, which makes the whole user experience of the GFX100 very different to any other large format camera. It really does feel like just a high-end pro mirrorless camera that gives you the quality of a large format camera. Now, if you have any questions on the GFX100, pop them in the comments below. Make sure to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and our blog, which links to those are in our description below, so you can stay up to date with all our latest camera news, as well as what's going on in store. And as always, if you enjoyed our video, hit the like button and the subscribe button, so you don't miss out on our future updates as we upload videos weekly.